Okay, you might be thinking, what is this pot doing there? Well, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's a pot that I'm going to be planting this mulberry in. So this is a Pakistani mulberry. And I it came in the mail with this. It was 20 bucks, which is not too bad, I guess, for a start. I'm going to take it. I'm going to stick it into this pot. Now, what is in this pot? Down in here, this is... Not that. This is all sand. Sand, a little bit of clay, a little bit of silt, but mostly sand, so it's about 70%. It'd be called a sandy loam. And then on top of it, I've placed some compost or s and some mulch. It's just a combination stuff. So you don't really wanna put this stuff in with the sand, want good draining soil in there. This stuff, if it doesn't get enough oxygen, will just end up rotting in there. I've had too many trees out here in the desert that I've planted in compost with uh, native soil or mulch in the native soil and it has rotted away the roots in about three or four years. So it's not an immediate response, but I had an apple tree right there and that guy uh, died last year and when I pulled it out of the ground physically I physically pulled it out of the ground It was crazy that I could do that. I'm not that strong. Seriously people. I'm not that strong but I pulled it out and Sure enough where those two guys were planted There was a good amount of compost sitting in there and the tree just got Derooted there were no roots where the compost was mixed in with the soil there were roots where it was surrounding, so it almost went around or over and above the compost and into the clay-type soil. So, thought that was kind of interesting. I no longer put compost in my soil. I just take sand or clay or silt and put it in there, mostly sand, so allowing for good drainage. Because these two guys are cherries and they need to have a good amount of drainage. I've killed too many of those guys in clay soil. Or I just suck at watering, one of the two. So back to this guy. Here, I'm just gonna take this out of the container. Has some roots that are sitting there shallow. This looks pretty dry. I'm gonna take it, plant it in there, and soak that baby in. So you just let it drop out like that. And when I plant this, I want to encourage roots to go down. So I'm going to take the sandy soil and put it around. Now you might be saying, why are you not so careful with how you're putting the potting soil around it? And the answer to that question, if you were asking it, if you weren't, then I guess you can just ignore this response. But I'm taking the sandy soil and going up and around. As long as this compost can stay superficial, meaning on the surface, then we should be good. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just making a little peak here at the trunk. Right there you can see that color change in the wood. That's where I want to have my soil line up to. And I want to have it sloped down and away so that when I water this, the water goes away from the trunk so that I decrease the chance of rotting the soil. And then I just take the compost, put it around the edge here, kind of like that. So it does look relatively flat, but the compost is pretty loose stuff. So um, it will break the water or split it up so that it doesn't disturb that nice little shape that's there. So now all I have to do is take it and water it. I will take a little bit of fertilizer, uh, organic fertilizer, maybe some bone meal or something, and put it on the top of it to allow nutrients. They give me no nutrients! To go down. It's a key word. Got to get nutrition to these cute little plants. And because it's a mulberry, I have it out here in the open, full sun, I'm um, right next to my uh, persimmon and my rasmataz grapevine. 
So this will just grow in the pot for the entire summer. I'm going to see how well it goes um, in the end of summer when I have the area cleared, which will be up at the top of the hill. So there's my jujube just south of the jujube, southwest of the jujube. I'm going to level this part out of the hill and plant the mulberry there so it can grow nice and large and ultimately shade some of these guys in the hot evening sun. Because full sun in St. George, yes, eight hours of sun, but at 110 degrees every day, these things get a beating. So the mulberry is a really good shade tree. And if I let it grow big, then it can shade all these guys and hopefully help keep them alive so I do less watering. All right, hope you enjoyed this. I will give you an update on how this does in the fall for the fruiting mulberry. Pakistani fruiting mulberry. Okay, water this thing, and then I'm out. Party on.